Starting off this countdown, we have the snake. In 2016, a grandma and her grandson were at Animal Kingdom when a wild snake fell from a tree and bit the grandson. Now, he was fine, the snake wasn't venomous. But the grandmother went into cardiac arrest after seeing this all happen and sadly, she passed away. Wouldn't that be a terrifying encounter? Like you go to Disney with a relative looking for a good time and then you end up injured and your relative dead. I feel so sorry for that family. The family of course sued Disney World because turns out that the snake was a local Florida serpent and somehow made it onto the resort. Coming in at number nine, we have the Boy in the Haunted Mansion ride times two. So not only is the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland haunted, but the Disney World in Florida is haunted as well. And again, by another little boy. According to a number of employees, they have seen this ghostly little boy riding the ride. In fact, they caught him on camera. So a worker there was taking photos of the ride for the Walt Disney World virtual visit. Upon reviewing the photos, she saw a ghostly little child peeking its head out. Keep in mind, there were no children around when this photo was taken. That is absolutely horrifying. Just looking at that photo gives me the creeps. Moving on to number eight, we have Mr. One Way. Mr. One Way is the name given to the ghost that haunts the Space Mountain ride at Disneyland, California. Mr. One Way is apparently this tall lumberjack looking ghost with red hair and a red face. One legend states that this ghost will hang out in the queue for Space Mountain and just stand there silently. Whereas another version says that he actually will get on the ride only with a single rider, but then disappear before the ride ever finishes. One worker claims that they actually got proof of Mr. One Way on camera. Surveillance footage shows a ghostly figure in an empty seat as the ride takes off. And according to the man beside the empty seat, he was talking to a man five minutes prior to the ride. At the end of the ride, the man was gone. So he was concerned and talked to a Disney employee. And they said that there never was a man beside him. And then they told him the story of Mr. One Way. And then looking at the footage, they saw the creepy outline of Mr. One Way. No thanks, I'm never going on that ride ever again. Coming in at number seven today, we have Disco Debbie. This is another ghost that haunts the Space Mountain ride. Like, out of all the rides, why haunt that one? I don't know. Anyways, this ghost has been named Disco Debbie. Apparently, she's the spirit of a cast member that passed away on this ride. You know it's Debbie you're seeing because she gives off a green glow. I guess that's why they named her Disco Debbie, cause she's like shining like a disco ball. I don't know. Anyways, apparently a number of guests have seen this woman through the old window that showed the star field in the indoor waiting area. Of course, they just thought she was part of the ride, but no, she's not. In our sixth spot today, we have the monorail runner. In June of 1966, a teenager named Thomas Guy Cleveland attempted to sneak into Disneyland for an event. I talked about this case in part three, so if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. But basically, he climbed the fence and was going to get into the park by running along the monorail track. In the end, he was sadly struck and killed by an oncoming train. According to several monorail drivers, the ghost of Thomas can still be seen to this day. On a number of occasions, they have seen his ghostly apparition running along the tracks. Dude, why are there so many ghosts at Disney? Like seriously, it's the last place you think would be haunted. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Tom Sawyer's Island. In June of 1973, two brothers decided to stay on Tom Sawyer's Island after closing. After a while of being on the island alone, they decided to head back. But in order to do so, they would have to swim across the rivers of America. They attempted this, but sadly they both drowned. And now apparently at night, you can see the ghosts of these two boys splashing around in the water. A number of cast members have reported these sightings thinking that someone was actually drowning, only for the brothers to disappear before their eyes. And I thought crocodiles were the only thing we had to fear in the waters at Disney, but obviously not. In our fourth spot today, we have the People Mover Ghost. The People Mover Ride was a transport attraction that was up and running at Tomorrowland in Disneyland, California until 1995. Only a month after it opened in 1967, a guest tripped and fell onto the tracks and was hit by an oncoming train and sadly killed. Apparently now the ghost of this guy haunts Tomorrowland and he likes to torment the guests, but not everyone only teens with blonde hair. I guess that's his type. 
A number of people have had this ghostly boy pull at their blonde hair. So all my blonde babes out there, you better watch out. In our third spot today, we have the ladies. The Ladies is the name given to a group of white-haired ladies that haunt the grounds of Disney. We don't know who they are or why they haunt Disney, but they do. They say that when these ladies appear, a sense of dread can be felt by whoever sees them. So far, they haven't done anything sinister, but like, we don't know what they want with the park. Also, they show up periodically. Like, they may be there for one day and then not show themselves until several years later. Maybe they're just a friendly group of old ladies that love Disney and still want to visit the park from beyond the grave. Let's hope it's that and that they're not like seeking revenge on Disney and the park goers. Hey, maybe they're Walt Disney's friends and they just meet up with him every year for a cup of tea, who knows? In our second spot today, we have the woman in white. The woman in white is the name given to a lady often wearing a 19th century white gown. She apparently haunts Main Street at Disneyland. But we for sure know that this lady is a nice ghost. Legend goes that on a number of occasions, she has guided lost children to the Disneyland Baby Care Center, where they were then reunited with their parents. Reunited and it feels so good. Sorry. So if you do happen to run into this ghost, don't worry, apparently she's nice. And in our number one spot today, we have the heart attack. Did you know that the Haunted Mansion ride used to be so scary that it gave someone a heart attack? According to a number of Disney workers, they have heard this creepy legend surrounding the Haunted Mansion ride. Legend goes that before the ride was open to the public, they had some people go on the ride and test it out. Well, one woman was so scared that she had a heart attack and died while on the ride. As a result, the ride went under construction for several more years before finally opening in 1969. So apart from the fake ghosts that the ride has, there are also a number of real ghosts that haunt this ride, like this poor woman. All right guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below which one of these ghosts freaked you out the most. Starting off this countdown, we have Animal Kingdom. Disney's Animal Kingdom is said to be the largest theme park in the world, covering 580 acres. There you can find an abundance of cute animals. But here's the thing, the park once got in a lot of trouble when it first opened in 1998, because they experienced a wave of animal deaths. In a short time frame, a bunch of the park animals were dropping dead. Now, Disney claimed it was only 12 animals, but in reality, it was closer to 30. This included rhinos, hippos, antelope, gazelles, and cheetah cubs. Now, you're probably wondering, how come these animals passed away? Well, mainly neglect on Disney's behalf. Other animals died after fighting each other, and others ingested toxic substances. Let's just hope that now Disney treats the animals better. In our ninth spot today, we have the Big Brawl. Imagine celebrating Christmas at Disney World only to encounter a real life Scrooge. So back in 2015, an old man was waiting for his food at a cafe in Disney World when he became tired and grumpy, and no, not like one of the seven dwarves. He was fed up saying it was taking too long. So. What did he do? He shoved one of the managers and started a huge fight among them all. At one point, he got tackled down. People were so scared that they fled the restaurant without even paying for their meals. So they dined and dashed at Disney. What a little rebel. In the end, the man was arrested and thrown out of Disney. Thankfully, only a few were injured in this fight. But still, imagine witnessing that fight on a time of holiday cheer. I bet he got cold in his stocking. Also, since when is Disney open on Christmas? Is that a thing that I just never knew? Let me know in the comments below. In our eighth spot today, we have the cleanliness. So Disney parks seem very well maintained and clean, right? Like there's no graffiti, hardly any litter on the grounds, and the rides seem to be well kept. Well, yes and no. According to a cast member, all the locations that a visitor can see are kept super clean, but the areas they don't see are disgusting. For example, apparently the inaccessible parts of the Haunted Mansion ride are gross. Like they are dusty, filled with cobwebs, and they have a nasty stench. And no, that was not part of the attraction. And they even found asbestos there. But obviously the park guests aren't supposed to know that. So it's okay, right? No, I'm sorry, that's gross. According to the same worker, every time she came home from her shift, she stunk and had to take a shower immediately. Yikes. Coming in our seventh spot, we have Splash Mountain. 
Disney has strict protocols in place to keep all its guests safe. Most of the injuries that have occurred on rides have been a result of people not listening to the safety protocols, like standing up in a ride or unbuckling themselves during the rides, etc. Sadly, this happened to a man riding the Splash Mountain ride. According to a Disney employee, he tried to get out of the ride and ended up getting struck by the raft behind him. He died from the impact. Police said it was a very strange incident, and as a result, Disney had to put even stricter protocols in place. In our sixth spot today, we have the illegal rider. So Disney has those height and age restrictions on rides for a reason, please follow them. It can be dangerous if those protocols aren't followed. Well, according to one Disney employee, they were horrified after encountering someone who was basically trying to cheat the system. So this was on the Space Mountain ride. They were doing their checks to make sure everyone had their little seat belts and I guess harnesses on correctly, and they saw a man with a large bag by his feet. The bag then started moving. The employee demanded he open the bag to show what was in there, but he kept refusing. Finally, the crew member got the bag, opened it, and inside found a kid. The parent had tried to hide their kid in a bag so they could still go on the ride. Are you kidding me? Like, that is so dangerous. They were literally going to risk their kid's life to just go on a Disney ride. That is insane. But also, according to employees, this happens more often than you would think. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the gun. Don't know how Disney let this pass security, but someone managed to sneak a gun into Disney. So a grandma and her grandson were riding the dinosaur ride from the dinosaur movie. Like, whoa, major throwback. I remember that ride. Anyways, at one point, she kicked something on the floor of the ride. And she was like, hmm, that's suspicious. What is that? She bent down to see what it was. And turns out it was a fully loaded gun. How someone managed to bring that into the park baffles me. Also, why? Anyways, they alerted the ride attendant and the police were called. The police found out that the gun belonged to a man named Angelo Lista. He claimed he didn't know he couldn't bring a fully loaded weapon onto a children's ride. Like imagine if that thing went off, that would have been bad. Anyways, we still don't know why Angelo decided to bring that with him, but at least no one got injured. I bet that that was one unforgettable day. In our fourth spot today, we have the ghost of Walt Disney. According to a number of employees, they believe that the ghost of Walt Disney haunts his park. In fact, a ghost was supposedly caught on security camera footage. You can see this ghostly figure just casually strolling through Disney. Take a look. Security caught this weird ghost on tape and immediately asked others what they thought it could be. There has been some debate on it, like some say it's a glitch or a monitor burn or reflection, whereas others believe it's the ghost of Walt Disney himself. Or Javier Cruz, a cast member that lost his life in 2004 during a parade flow at Disneyland. But what do you guys think of this? Is this real footage of a Disney ghost? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Coming in at number three, we have the cover up. According to a former Disney World College program cast member, there once was a man who took his life in one of the Disney hotel rooms and Disney used its magic to cover it all up. So basically the room in which it happened had its door and windows covered with a pardon our dust renovation sign. When police arrived, they had a bunch of costumed characters and cast members go to one section of the hotel for a meet and greet to distract the guests from seeing the police come into the building. Apparently, Disney constantly does this. They always divert your attention when something traumatic happens. For example, another employee said that they used fire jugglers to distract people when an animal control officer had to get a venomous snake out of the hotel's water fountain. And this guy only had 15 minutes to do it while the show was going on. Honestly, it just seems super stressful working for Disney. I swear, some Disney workers are like trained as if they're part of the FBI or something like that. In our second spot, we have the stunt gone wrong. According to a number of articles, the Hollywood Studios Indiana Jones epic stunt spectacular show was one of the most dangerous shows at Disney. Also, what a name, Hollywood Studios Indiana Jones epic stunt spectacular show. Geez, say that 10 times fast. Now, why is this? Well, a number of stunt performers have gotten badly injured in this action-packed show. Apparently, one performer fell 30 feet to the ground after his support cable broke. Another time, a different employee fell 25 to five. Another time, a different performer fell 25 feet to the concrete. And a third fell 25 feet to the ground after a prop ladder broke. Thankfully, those performers all survived. But in 2009, one performer passed away after performing a tumbling roll. 
For this trick, the performer had to jump in the air, dive over another performer, and then tuck and roll onto a mat. But something went wrong, and the performer ended up landing wrong and snapping their neck. That is absolutely heartbreaking and terrifying. And in our number one spot today, we have the Haunted Dolls. I think that the scariest ride in Disney would have to be It's a Small World. Like, take a look at those terrifying dolls. And apparently, they're haunted, okay? According to a number of Disney employees, they have seen the dolls in the ride change positions, disappear, or even move when the ride is off. Some even say that their hair appears to grow on its own, as if they're alive. In fact, every couple of months, Disney's cosmetology team goes in and cuts the doll's hair because they grow. But they say it's just the humidity combined with gravity and then that causes the hair to stretch. Either way, it's freaking creepy. According to one employee, they arrive for their morning shift only to find that a couple of dolls switched places during the night and some vanished without a trace. So listen here, Annabelle, okay? Leave those damn dolls alone. Don't touch Disney. Starting off this countdown, we have the boy in the haunted mansion. According to a number of Disney employees, there's a young boy that haunts the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland in California. So legend goes that this little boy was once caught spreading his mom's ashes in this ride. As we all know by now from the other videos I've done on Disney on this channel, this is fairly common. A number of people bring their deceased loved ones ashes and sprinkle them all over the park. This happened so often that Disney had to ban it and put protocols in place for it. Anyways, ever since then, the boy has been seen on this ride crying for his mother. He also has been spotted on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride as well. So what happened? Did the boy lose his mom at Disneyland? Who knows? But I think it's pretty freaky. Moving on to number nine, we have Thunder Mountain. In 2003, something really freaking dark happened on the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad roller coaster at Disneyland. Say that five times fast. Railroad roller coaster. <laughs> During this ride, one of the wheels fell off and the ride crashed. As a result, it took the life of a man named Marcelo Torres and it injured 10 other guests. And guess what? After the California Division of Occupational Safety and Health investigated this accident, they found that the mechanic and ride operators were at fault. This incident was a result of budget cuts at the park. The wheel needed fixing before and the mechanic did cheap work on the roller coaster. And apparently a half an hour before the incident occurred, the ride operators heard a weird noise coming from the ride but ignored it. In the end, the Torres family sued Disney and they won the battle. Imagine that though, Disney trying to cut corners on their rides. Like, that doesn't make me feel safe at all. In our eighth spot today, we have the initiation. Believe it or not, but Disney is known to have some pretty terrifying hazing and initiation rituals for new staff members. But the initiation is not what you think. The staff are mentally and physically tortured. For starters, they go through this intense training process in which they learn all the do's and don'ts of being an employee, like learning scripts word for word without adding words or substitutes or like ums, you can't do any of that. Trust me, it's worse than you think. On top of that, they are then forced to smile all the time and they will get in trouble if caught not smiling. And of course, during this week or so of hell, you got other employees pulling pranks, making you wish you never applied for this job in the first place. Moving on at number seven, we have the ghost of Epcot. As you probably have noticed by now from the other parts in this series, Disney is incredibly haunted. Like there are hundreds of ghosts that haunt the parks. For this one, let's talk about the little girl and boy that haunts Spaceship Earth at Epcot. A number of people have seen a small girl with long blonde hair riding in one of the cars. They've also seen a boy run in front of them only to vanish into thin air. Pretty creepy, am I right? In our sixth spot today, we have California Screamin' Attraction. Way too many accidents have happened on Disney rides. It's actually pretty scary and makes me never wanna go on roller coasters ever again. Now, let's take a look at the California Screaming Ride, which is at Disney's California Adventure. Some of you probably know it by the new name, Incredicoaster, because they renamed it to that for some reason. Anyways, there was one pretty creepy incident on this ride where it malfunctioned and a train ended up smashing into another. As a result, 15 guests were sent to the hospital. 
Like imagine that, you're at Disney chilling, trying to have a good time, and next thing you know it, you're in the hospital. It's horrifying. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Mickey and Friends parking structure. In 2012, a young man's body was found at Disneyland's Mickey and Friends parking structure. At first, it was thought that he took his own life, but no one saw him jump, so they don't really know what happened. Now, here's the eerie thing. This structure has been the site for a number of deaths. In 2012, a man fell from one of the floors and passed away. And in 2010, a man purposefully jumped from the top of the structure. It's like it's cursed or something. In our fourth spot, we have the hijacking gone wrong. On June 4th, 1983, an 18-year-old man and his friend decided to steal a rubber emergency raft from Tom Sawyer's Island. They went into the restricted cast-only area of the park to get it. Then they hopped on it and took it for a ride. Until it capsized and one of the boys sadly drowned. In the end, the victim's mom sued Disneyland for letting her intoxicated son onto the premise. And also, she sued the travel agency, who she claimed didn't arrange the trip properly and weren't supervising the teens. In the end, she ended up winning the lawsuits. Moving on to number three, we have the Disney Hotel. Another place associated with Disney where a number of people have died. Sadly, most of the deaths were self-inflicted. For starters, in 1994, a 74-year-old man jumped from the eighth floor balcony to his death. In 1996, a 23-year-old man either jumped or fell to his death. It still hasn't been discovered which one it was. And in 1998, an employee jumped from the same floor as that previous man. But this employee actually survived the jump. I don't know what's up with this hotel, but countless guests have died there. It makes it seem like something sinister is going on there. Or it's cursed. In our second spot today, we have the Tower of Terror. Of course, this ride is haunted. I mean, it's pretty creepy on its own. I swear, ghosts like to haunt the scary rides like the Haunted Mansion, the Tower of Terror, you get it. Why don't they haunt the little teacup spinning ride or the flying Dumbo ride, you know? Anyways, rumor has it among employees that they often see a ghost wandering around the Tower of Terror after hours. On a number of occasions, staff have seen this man. They call out to him, but he doesn't reply. Then he disappears right in front of their eyes. Yeah, no thank you, no. And in our number one spot today, we have the Roger Rabbit ride. In September of 2000, a young park guest ended up falling out of Disney's Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin ride. Now, he did survive the initial accident, but was left with very serious injuries. When he fell out of the car, the ride rolled over him and folded his body in half. He was stuck under there for 10 minutes before someone came to free him. He went into cardiac arrest and was left with serious brain damage. After that incident, Incident, he never walked or talked again. He passed away several years later as a result of these injuries. Of course, Disney is to blame for this. They said medical personnel arrived on the scene way too late. Things may have been different if they got there faster. This accident caused a lot of their emergency protocols to change. Mm -hmm. 